Okay, folks, welcome to another episode of ThinkPad Mods and Rebuilds. Today we're going to uh, detail a hack to be able to mount one of these, which is a micro SATA to M SATA adapter to replace a 1.8 inch U SATA drive micro SATA drive and the idea is here you use this plus an M SATA card this gets mounted into there and what we're going to do we're going to take this card and mount it so that it is solid in the drive bay now I should mention at this point um, there are several think pads that take um, 1.8 inch um, micro SATA drives. Those particular think pads being the T400S, the T410S, the X300, and this model that I have, which is an X301. Some things you're going to need obviously, you need a micro SATA drive. U SATA. You need the adapter. These are widely available on eBay. I think I paid about seven dollars for that one. Obviously an M SATA drive, a mini SATA drive. You will also need a couple of old credit cards or uh, hotel room keys. I would get the kind that have the magnetic stripe versus the kind that have the embedded chip where you touch them to the door and it lets you in. This type goes into the lock like this and it has a magnetic stripe on the back. These tend to be thinner. You'll also need a screwdriver, a small drill bit. You need a pair of um, machine screws and the nuts to sink them into. And these little gems here are the little knurled captive nuts that came from a LCD that was all broken and I don't know if you can see those let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see what those look like those go on the back of the card so basically um, what you're doing is you're going to drill a couple of holes in these to mount this onto the card and then it fits into the drive base slot. Oh, well, you can see that, but that's the uh, you say to drive bay on the X301. And that's where we're going to put it. I apologize if this video is a little bit jerky, but um, it is what it is. So anyway, the standard you say to drive fits in here. And it has a couple of rails on the side, so there's not a lot of movement. And it just slides in just like that. And then there's a cover, obviously, that goes over the top of it. This is the cover for this particular model. It mounts from the bottom. At any rate, the idea is... Set this down and see if I can stabilize that enough to use my other hand to get in here and pull this out. The idea is... The way this... You say to drive is configured dimensions wise. I discovered, oh look, the credit card is exactly the same size, a little bit long, but it goes in here and it fits right through that slot without a whole lot of side play. And what we're going to do, we're going to mount this little gem to the cards. And the reason I used two is because one was too thin and it wobbled around a whole lot. With two, it gives you a lot more stability and it fits into the drive bay just a little bit better. So if you look at this, two of them fits pretty good. So I arrived at that as a, as a good um, thickness. Um, that way, when you use these screws, you go through the card into 
the backing, the credit cards or room keys, you have something to grab a hold of. It's not just a one thin piece of plastic. It's a fairly substantial base. I should mention at this point that some of the adapters like this, they actually have this chip mounted on the top. And it's completely out of the way over here on this side so that you know drilling through this is not a big deal but this one has a chip that's mounted to the bottom so you have to cut a little bit of a hole there into the cards and I'll show you how to match that up so that you make good a good hole you need to account for the shape of the chip and also the legs of the chip over here so that you have some room when it's mounted up on here for that chip to sit down inside a little hole that you've cut in the card. Basically what we've got to do here is figure out where to cut that hole into the cards. And where we do that, how we do that, is I take a piece of basically 3M sticky note and mount it on top of here and that will tell me where the chip hole is did there was I took the sticky note which is a little bit longer than the you say the adapter card and I mashed it up over the top of where that chip is sticking up and I'm going to take that and that way I'll know where to cut my hole because I'm going to cut that little hole out along with some extra space here to account for the legs but this card is going to sit just about like that with a hole in it right about there. You can see where the outline of the hole is and what I'm going to do now is take a razor blade and just cut a hole right there. So you can see I've got a hole cut in the sticky and I need to allow for a little bit extra on this side to fit the legs of the chip. But you kind of see where I'm going with this. The idea is to um, kind of line it up and you can just eyeball it, we'll be pretty close. Underneath here is the actual uh, micro SATA drive that came out of this 301. Okay, so the cut into the sticky note is complete. And you can see we have an area there to relieve, uh, to use as a template on the cards cut it out. I would sh should also mention at this point that this part up here is where the sticky part of the sticky note is, which helps that it to stay uh, attached to the back of the uh, adapter card as you're kind of scoping this out. Now here we have the sticky note mounted to the room key. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut this out on both cards. So I have the two cards back to back, like that, and I'm going to cut that hole in the same spot on both of them. So a little more elaboration on what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a small drill bit and drill out all four corners. That way it kind of gives me a stop so when I'm cutting with the razor blade or the X-Acto knife that I don't go too far. And the idea is that we just take out what we need. Okay, here you see I have the holes drilled in both the cards, and notice I've got the arrows on both pointing in the direction that the card is going to be inserted. All I have to do is cut my square box right there on both cards, and we're ready for the next step after that. Okay, so here's one cut, and you can see kind of how this is going to line up. Right, I should mention that this is completely unnecessary with the other chip that I had because that chip is mounted on the top here over on the edge and it's no factor. But this particular adapter seems to work better. I'm not sure why because it looks like the wiring is exactly the same, it's just that the chip location is different. But that fits right down in there. So, what I'm going to probably do. Is I'm going to take a file and kind of dress those edges up there so that it uh, it looks a little bit better. But one card's done. I'm going to do the other one now.
so I've relieved out the plastic on the one card and you can see it fits over that pretty good and that's just about the orientation we want right there so I'm gonna do the other card and then put the two of them together so as you can see the card is through the hole sticks out the back you basically want to get the front edge of the card right up flush like that <clears throat> and align it so it's just about in the center of the credit card or the room key and then you're going to mark those two holes and drill those out on both cards so you can see I've got I took a sharpie and marked the two holes and that's where I'm going to drill you want to make sure that this is down snug against that edge of the card and just eyeball it that there's the same amount of white space on either side that way it'll fit in the track and be centered up correctly Okay, so you can see we have our holes drilled and then the card just sits on top like this and this is where the screws come in.